let us now summarize our understanding of the optimal mechanism that we discussed in the uh, previous two modules uh, one for the single agent case and for the multi agent case and we uh, finally concluded that the optimal mechanism design problem can be reduced to this uh, uh, relatively simple expression uh, for the optimization problem where we are maximizing the following quantity uh, this quantity is the the sum of the products of the virtual valuations of each of these agents multiplied by the, the their probability of uh, uh, getting allocated that object and then uh, uh, taking the expectation with respect to gt which is the the, the prior distribution over the type profile t and uh, we'll have to maximize this with respect to f where f is a non decreasing in expectation so this non decreasing in expectation is required to ensure that the mechanism uh, is uh, is truthful incentive compatible in the bayesian uh, setup and we have found that under a mild enough assumption of regularity uh, which is satisfied by most of the um, distributions uh, majority of the distributions that we will be dealing with uh, the, the solution happens to be uh, uh, relatively simple so uh, the agents now instead of looking at their types directly we are looking at their virtual types or the virtual valuations uh, WITI and the object is allocated to the agent whose virtual valuation is the highest and all the other agents get do not get that object now we can also once we know that this this is the uh, FIT or uh, the uh, allocation rule then using the Meyerson's uh, payment formula we can find out the payment for each of these players so we will do that in the, in this uh, module and we'll see how uh, those things are related now um, what one observation that we can make is that we actually started to find the mechanism uh, which is non decreasing in expectation that means we were actually trying to find uh, some randomized mechanism which satisfies this property of BIC and IIR but uh, with the with this assumption of regularity what we actually found is a mechanism which is deterministic it is deterministic because we are either uh, allocating the whole object to that agent or uh, nothing at all uh, it is individually rational uh, so it is, this is not interim individually rational for any distribution any prior this is going to be uh, individually rational uh, and also DSIC because this uh, the mechanism that we actually found uh, is not only non decreasing in expectation it is actually non decreasing so according to the first result of uh, Meyerson's characterization we can conclude that this mechanism is dominant strategy incentive compatible so we actually found a mechanism which is much stronger um, in a larger uh, class of mechanisms so the optimal mechanism as this picture shows that to, uh, this, this in this class of BIC IIR and randomized mechanisms uh, there is a smaller subclass called uh, which are DSIC IR and deterministic but our optimal mechanism incidentally lies in that smaller set so let us now uh, look at what is the um, what is the actual allocation and payment uh, for this optimal mechanism the Meyerson's optimal mechanism uh, for single object allocation in the most general setting with multiple agents and this uh, the whole learning that we have done in the previous modules can be summarized into this theorem so suppose every agent's valuation is regular that is uh, an assumption that we will start with and uh, uh, for every type profile then the following things should happen for the optimal mechanism so if the uh, uh, the virtual valuations are all negative for all these players then it is best to not sell the object that is what the uh, the, uh, the optimal value of that uh, uh, of that optimization problem would give you otherwise if there exists at least one agent whose virtual valuation is uh, positive non negative then we are going to give it to the agent who has the highest virtual valuation so this is uh, this is the second condition and ties can be broken arbitrarily now we can once we know this uh, this allocation rule we can find out what is the payment according to the payment formula that we have we have given in the characterization result so payments will be given by now that we will have to take care of both these cases the first case is where uh, all the uh, if all the uh, um, 
virtual valuations are negative so we'll have to first look at whether the virtual valuation is positive or not and the second case is whether that valuation so uh, among multiple agents we should be uh, able to give it to the agent uh, who has the highest virtual valuation uh, but the uh, when you look at the integral formula uh, you'll see a point at which and this is something that we have al also observed for other mechanisms particularly the second price auctions that there is a point after which this agent starts becoming the winner that is it actually uh, crosses this threshold so uh, suppose i is the highest uh, uh, agent who has the highest virtual valuation so till uh, till which point it actually starts becoming the winner could be the threshold and therefore i mean i am not going into the um, uh, going into the actual uh, derivation of this payment because it is straightforward and one can do that but uh, i am just giving you some intuition what is happening so if the allocation for an agent is zero then the payment will also be equal to zero that's quite uh, obvious uh, but for the for the other case when uh, it is the agent who is actually winning this object uh, it has to look at two cases the first one is the inverse value of uh, this uh, inverse function of the blue eye uh, of zero so this is the uh, that value of this agent uh, uh, at which point the virtual valuation becomes uh, zero so you can you can remember that the virtual valuations were a monotone increasing function and it was crossing that uh, y equal to zero line at some point so this point is essentially so if uh, on the y-axis we plot w i t i and on the on the x-axis we have this t i so this is the point which is w uh, w i inverse of zero so it has to cross that uh, positive value otherwise it will not be considered to become a, become a winner um, and the the second uh, condition is that uh, it, it has to cross the value of the second highest uh, virtual valuation so its virtual valuation should uh, cross the second highest virtual valuation that value is being uh, denoted by ki star t minus i so so these two things we have actually already defined and if this conditions get satisfied then we can say that this mechanism f and p vector is the optimal mechanism so f comma p is a is an optimal mechanism if it satisfies this set of conditions so this gives a complete prescription of how uh, optimal mechanism should be designed uh, as long as their uh, their virtual valuations are regular and uh, you are looking at only single object allocation so let us now uh, look at some examples to understand how does the uh, um, the optimal mechanism look like so suppose we start with two buyers so their type set is given by this interval 0 to 12 and 0 to 18 and each of this has uniform and independent prior so uh, the uh, the first thing will be to calculate their uh, virtual valuations and the virtual valuation you can you can do this math to find out that this is going to be 2t1 t minus 12 similarly for player 2 it is going to be 2t2 minus 18 now let us look at uh, various cases of uh, t1 and t2 uh, such that um, we can uh, visualize who will be the winner in this case and what will be their payments so the first type profile that we are looking at is when t1 is 4 and t2 is 8 clearly in, in that case the virtual valuations are both negative so therefore nobody gets uh, this object the object is unsold and both of these players get zero uh, as their pay payment now um, when it is uh, for player one when it is two and for player two it is 12 then you can see that uh, this uh, agent uh, uh, for the player two uh, the threshold is crossed so its virtual valuation is positive but uh, for player one the virtual valuation is uh, is negative so it is definitely going to be sold to player two but uh, how uh, how can we say what is the payment the payment will come from this formula that uh, first you look at the uh, the w inverse w two inverse of zero so in this case w two inverse of zero is nine and just for i mean here we will not need it but uh, let us also save the case that w one inverse of zero is, is six 
right? So uh, this is nine, and the uh, other situation where this becomes so, what is the threshold at which it starts becoming the winner? Um, what is that value of uh, ki star t minus i? Turns out that the other uh, other agent's virtual valuation uh, is exactly equal to. Uh, I mean, it it is negative. So uh, if you look at, if you try to uh, sort of um, compare the point at which it starts becoming the winner, that is w two t two, is actually greater than or equal to w one t one you will find that this quantity is negative which is uh, because it is 2 uh, it will be minus 8 so you will find that uh, the value of uh, so if you want to find this out this is greater than or equal to minus 8 so you can find that t2 will be greater than or equal to 5 in this case and from that point onwards it starts becoming a winner but because this uh, inverse value of uh, w inverse of 0 uh, is larger than this value so therefore the payment will be the max of these two quantities which is 9 in this case okay so similarly we can do the calculation for uh, when both these cases are 6 so in this case this exactly becomes equal to 0 uh, w uh, w1 uh, and w2 t2 uh, is is not uh, is not crossing that uh, the threshold of 0 so therefore, the, the the inverse thing happens. It goes to player one, and uh, this uh, this number, which is the w inverse of uh, zero, uh, w one inverse of zero, is is becoming the payment for player one. Now we consider this case where uh, it is nine for both these players. So uh, for this case, for player two, it exactly becomes equal to zero. So the w two t two becomes exactly equal to zero. Here it is a positive quantity. Now again, uh, because this positive quantity is larger than than that zero, so therefore um, uh, player one becomes the winner, and uh, it pays a certain amount, which is going to be uh, the max of those two quantities. Now the the last uh, uh, situation is an interesting situation because in this case what is happening is both these players have virtual valuation which is positive so they both cross the threshold of zero uh, now the uh, important part is that because this is 8 and this is 15 so uh, what is the corresponding value of w1t1 uh, w1t1 uh, is um, 4 and w2t2 is 12 so clearly the uh, player 2 wins uh, its virtual valuation is larger uh, but at what point should it uh, uh, sh should so at what point it starts becoming the winner and um, uh, then you can actually compare between these two things um, the uh, that point where it starts becoming the winner and also this w2 inverse of 0 which is 9 so whichever is larger uh, this agent will be asked to pay that so how can we actually consider at which point it starts becoming the winner so for the, uh, to find that we'll have to look at the the virtual valuation 2t minus 18 and equate that so uh, the point at which it starts becoming exactly equal to the uh, the uh, the virtual valuation of the other player which is 4 that is the point where it starts becoming the winner so now you can see that t2 must be at least as uh, as much as 11 that is the point at which it starts becoming the winner. So because this threshold is larger than this 9, so the max of these two numbers will be exactly equal to 11. So therefore, player 2 will be asked to pay this much amount. So that explains how this, uh, how this uh, optimal mechanism works. In some sense, you can think of that this quantity here is acting like a reserve price that you don't really uh, ask this agent uh, to just become the winner and take this away so the payment should not be exactly equal to uh, the the point uh, where it starts becoming the winner rather there is a kind of a reserve price if you do not cross that value then possibly will, will not win it and even if between these two thing um, between these two points uh, this becomes the uh, the larger one so the reserve price is essentially larger than the let's say the second highest bid then you actually pay the reserve price, not the second highest bid. So that is uh, exactly what uh, this mechanism is trying to do. So uh, this is a sort of an in intuition that uh, you can uh, keep in mind. 
uh, the, that intuition is very direct when you have uh, symmetric bidders. So the, all the valuations are drawn from the same distribution. So therefore, uh, GIs and TIs are all the same. And therefore, the virtual valuation is also going to be the same for all these agents. So in that case, what we know because of uh, the, um, uh, the condition on, of regularity, that whenever this, this uh, inequality holds, uh, this implies and is implied by the fact that uh, ti the corresponding type uh, of that player is also going to be larger than the other agent so um, then uh, the the mechanism or this optimal mechanism becomes a little simpler uh, the object actually goes to the highest bidder and uh, it is not sold if the uh, the virtual valuation of all the agents become uh, less than zero then the payment will will just be uh, w inverse of zero and the max over the rest of the agents so this means that you are giving it to the highest bidder you are charging it the second highest bid or the reserve price so this is exactly a, a equal to the uh, second price auction uh, with a reserve price uh, in the case of symmetric bidders all right so now we are actually uh, talk, going to talk about the efficiency part of this optimal mechanism so far we have not uh, worried about what is the uh, uh, what is the sum of the valuation of these agents or um, whether we are allocating the object in the efficient way uh, we are just trying to uh, maximize the, uh, the revenue of this mechanism and in this mechanism in this example we'll see that uh, there is a kind of a tension between efficiency and optimality so he, uh, the example is the following so there are two players again uh, player one has the uh, the type uh, the, the set the type set is essentially between zero and ten the interval between zero and ten and uh, the interval between zero to six for player two and uh, we are going to assume that the priors are uniform and independent so then you can actually find out the what is the virtual valuation and um, virtual valuation for both these agents so because we are talking about efficiency we'll not be bothering much about the payments we'll just be uh, uh, talking about at what point it starts becoming the winner whoever becomes the winner so we see the first observation that we can make is if um, uh, so the condition under which both this uh, both this uh, valuations uh, virtual valuations are negative right so w2t2 negative or uh, non non positive so we can see that uh, for player one if t1 is less than or equal to five and for player two if t2 is less than or equal to three so that is within within this um, rectangle here uh, this object is getting unsold right now clearly this is an inefficient outcome because you could have allocated to at least the agent who values is the, is the uh, most uh, but because we are actually looking at the uh, the revenue uh, earned from it and we have a, a prior distribution on that optimal mechanism tells us that the optimal revenue will actually be negative so we should not be selling the object at all uh, even when the object is getting sold so it, you can uh, find that out that which which is the situation where each of these things so outside this box this uh, red box uh, the uh, the object is going to be sold but it is going to be sold according to uh, the fact that whoever has the highest virtual valuation so you can see that in this line uh, this line here will be the the determining factor so the threshold uh, on the on the left hand side on this side of the of that line uh, you are going to uh, uh, give the object to player 2 because this virtual valuation will be larger on this side, uh, player one will win because that uh, uh, the virtual valuation of W1, T1 will be larger. And uh, how far it is from efficiency. Uh, so this is uh, this particular line, that uh, uh, determining line will hit the, uh, the X axis at this point two. And this is the 45 degree line. Uh, which we have drawn this is the uh, t1 equal to t2 line so clearly um, you can see that this this line is um, um, selling the object uh, inefficient way uh, at least in this region because in this region we know that t1 is larger than t2 
uh, and um, uh, you are giving the object to player 2. So even though you are selling that object under that situation as well, uh, because of their um, uh, virtual valuations and also uh, the, the prior distribution on which you have found the virtual valuation, um, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a skewness between the uh, efficiency and the optimal mechanism. So optimal mechanism does not always give the object to the efficient uh, outcome.